Yeah. Okay. So you got a lot of potential to be really good really quick. Okay. But I'm going to tease you with a joke. You remember this one. It's a good one. If you held a fork and a knife like you hold a golf club, you'd starve to death. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that right hand organized. Your left hand holds pretty good. Um, they may have adjusted something out there, but in general, I don't see too much, too much issue with it. And actually, the path of your golf club to the golf ball is pretty good. Now, you kind of touch the ground a little bit before you touch the ball, okay? And you lose a little bit of control of it right here because of that grip, because you've got it kind of like a baseball in the webbing of the right hand rather than in a place where it can actually bench on a right hand, okay? So we can get you organized pretty quickly, in my opinion, and you can be on your way to some awesome golf. Let's get you on the mat. Sandy probably mentioned that to you. Uh, no, but your coach said. Okay, good. So put your good, and don't get a sunburn, brother. You're already getting some. Do you have sunblock on? Okay. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Very, very nice. And so there's a nice left. And organize your feet. So you're like, there you go. So there's the left arm kind of in front of your pec, humerus bone in front of pec. There's a nice bent back left wrist. Nice vertical left wrist. So there's a vertical left wrist, which we want in golf, as opposed to a turned wrist. So yours is bent back and vertical. Check that box. Awesome. Okay. Very, very good. And when you grip it, you're going to be mindful of the club face. It's vertical, right? Now the right hand, let me explain. I'll take the club away just for a sec. The right hand's job, and you stay right there. The left hand, the grip kind of goes more across our hand. So this is a little bit more across than along. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Across than along. So yep. you've got a pretty good left hand grip. Don't really have to mess with it much. The right hand grip, there's a subtle change there. There's a, it's a fraction more along. So see how that would be across. This is sort of along. And also you can kind of see how the lifeline of the right hand can marry or just kind of cuddle on top of the left thumb, right? And what happens is, it take, look at that index finger, how it kind of gets it into a place where you can almost sense this kind of locking in of, there's a cross, and as I rotate it a little bit, now my knuckle of that finger just kind of went and got on top of the grip a fraction, didn't it? And why that's important, there's no real pressure in my right hand. It's gentle. Like, I mean, I'm holding on, but not like for dear life. But at the top, when I go to the top of my swing, See where the weight of the club wants to sit? There's a bent wrist. There's the weight of the club resting in that crook of the index finger in that knuckle. See behind my big head right there? Yep. So don't really need a right thumb. Now what's happening with you, brother, is this thing's kind of flopping around in here. And that's why you're unreliable, unreliable because it actually flops into the webbing of your right hand. Okay. Now the problem every time we change the grip is we change rhythm. And I know you're new to the game. That's cool. And I love how Sandy's like, yeah, you got to, if you want to date me, you got to play golf. That's pretty funny. And it seems worth it. She's lovely. Yeah. yeah. And then, there you go. Good. See, I will. And that's, yeah, that trigger. Yeah, and that's pretty spot on. So you really don't need a right thumb to play golf. You know, it rests like a guy on Sunday watching football. Hopefully not doing much, just enjoying football, okay? And this is structured arms across, you know, the left arm is a bit on top of the pec. The right arm would be a little bit more relaxed right here, okay? So now if I put a golf ball here and I narrowed your stance maybe an inch or so is all. Ball. You just So here's my hips. If I hip hinged myself down, now we're in a great spot, okay, with a functional looking right hand. That's why I think you're going to be good really quick. Because if I take your backswing here and I take the club back and I let your shoulders start to work down, and I put the club up here. Close your eyes for a sec. Like, look down there and feel. So you and Sandy do the same thing. You kind of want to go and go this way. When you go this way, see how the weight of the club is going to want to fall into the webbing? Right. But if the wrist is a little flatter, now the club will stay behind that knuckle. Can you feel that? Yep. Good. So eyes down, shoulder down, and kind of hold that just for a second. Good, good, good. Awesome, awesome. Feel it, feel it, feel it. Okay, go to the golf ball. And then try and hit one for me as best you can. Good, bad, or indifferent. Good. Okay, come on over. 
I know you missed, and I know the rhythm's off. And I know you're going to be working hard to kind of put, you know, the weight of that shaft swinging, making sense in your hands, connecting the dots A to B, okay? Yeah, because it's kind of, you know how it is, it changes. Changes everything. It changes everything. Of course it does. Yeah. It's a complete rhythm change, right? But it's massively better. So on the right screen, you know, if I come, come back to address, you got this kind of super funky right hand. Now on the left screen, it's a lot more organized. And at the top, see how it kind of organizes the golf club versus on this one. See how the club gets over hinged? Uh, yeah, it's you know it's almost like it could tap your hat. Right, you've lost control of it there. So on the through swing, you know you've missed this shot, but you know it's pretty darn functional. And another thing, you know, in the golf school, we'll never tell you to keep your head down. Like you missed, and that's okay, and it has nothing to do with you keeping your eye on the ball. You just missed. Okay, and you, you'll miss less and less with more organized, thoughtful reps. Keeping your eye on the ball, yeah, okay, if it was moving, I would tell you to fixate on it. But it's not moving. Set up, organize yourself to it, be aware it's there. Put your mind more in your body than attention on the ball. Nobody's going to move it, right? Now, if it was moving around, then you'd have to kind of go, okay, I can get it, right? But it's not going to move. So, you know, once you once you collect it down at the bottom, good, bad, or indifferent, that's when a head's going to start to, Track the ball flight, okay? So the best, and you do a pretty good job of it, really. I mean, you're going to be a really good golfer in no time at all. And I'll just drop one good video. Whoops, not that one. One good video in here just to kind of give you an example of the GOAT. The greatest of all time is Annika Sorenstam. And the reason I say that, she won 79 times in a modern era of golf which is insane, shot 59 here in the valley, okay, and take a look at this, I'm not saying you got to, you know, rotate your head out like this, watch your head, watch where the club is, is that the caddy's head, right, watch her face, is she trying to stay down, no, well, she's not trying to stay, already... yeah, of course it is, sure, and I'm not saying, you, I'm not saying you need to do that, I'm just saying, but nobody's come steal a ball, right, you're going to learn how to swing the weight and radius of, the, of that tool, a lot better, my friend, if you have gentle management of it. See, the golf club weighs two pounds, right? And, it, and so as it weighs two pounds, statically right here, there it is, right? And then it takes on some momentum into a backswing, and then it kind of benches, boom. It sits on that knuckle, not on the thumb, not on the webbing. That's okay. Well, now you do, right? You took a few lessons, and now you, now you know, right? And so now, and you swing it back, and it goes, and lands, boom. Here's the hook it gets hooked by. Here's the bench it benches on, right? If it doesn't have the hook, it falls, right? And you know what I'm saying? If, and if it, doesn't have the, it's, it, if it doesn't have the bench, it's sloppy. You didn't have the bench because it was flopping around in the webbing, okay? So you getting organized and letting that thing be structured. Now, as you collect the ball, you're going to learn how to move this radius, through space. Okay, here's the radius. This club is painting your radius. Whew. Now that radius through space can be here. Here's the same swing right here, watch. It's just now I'm going to just take it to this point, which will include the golf ball. Same thing. One was this high off the ground, one was where it should be for a ball. Or maybe the ball is this high off the ground on a, in a bush, on the top of a bush, or on some funky tee. You with me? Yep. That's your homework for now. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, my man? Thank you. You got it. Let me